This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the 5 months later review. So in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at the iPhone 13 Pro Max and at the end of the video I will also tell my experience of it and how I've been using it in the past 5 months. So let's get started. The iPhone 13 Pro Max looks almost the same as the 12 Pro Max, it has the same stainless steel sides. I would love to see that Apple uses a coating or something on the stainless steel, that it will not get dirty so quickly, and also let fingerprints on the sides. I do recommend to use a case with this iPhone because the stainless steel is scratching really fast. The back is also the same as the 12 Pro Max, it has the same frosted finish on the glass. I do have this also on my 11 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max and on my 13 Pro Max, and it don't pick up fingerprints, and I love that. And now we're going to talk about the design changes there is not that much but what is clearly noticeable is of course the notch. Apple did make the notch smaller and it did move the speaker hole to the bezel. So that's the reason why the notch is smaller. To be honest in day to day use I don't notice the notch anymore but also I don't mind if they make the notch smaller. Everything that they will do with it I'm fine for it. And also the changes that they will remove the notch on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max is really big. They will pretty much go to a hole punch and a pill cut out. These are just legs but we will see what Apple will do. Now we're going back to the review and if you want that I do cover Apple leaks on my channel, just let me know. So the other design change on the 13 Pro Max is the camera bump. There's not that much change about the camera bump, it's only a little bit thicker and bigger. Also the lenses are a little bit bigger so they can capture more light, but I will talk about that in a couple of minutes. And that's everything what they changed on the outside of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This iPhone does have the Apple A15 Bionic chip, the newest chip from Apple. And as always, it's the best and fastest smartphone chip in the world. I cannot say that much about the A15 Bionic chip because it's already insanely good for a smartphone. But there are some things where I want to talk about. Now it has an all new 5 core GPU with 50% faster graphics than any other smartphone, that's crazy. It also has new CPU cores, performance cores and efficiency cores. That means the A15 Bionic can go through powerful complex tasks and also present Preserves battery life. It has also a super fast neural engine that performs up to 15.8 trillion operations per second. That's mind blowing. That also enables cinematic mode and smart high dynamic range 4. So the A15 Bionic is really good for iPhone gamers and also for other things like editing videos and photos and much more. The battery in this iPhone is amazing, it's so good, it has 2.5 more hours than the 12 Pro Max. Apple did make the battery smaller in the 12 Pro Max, and in the 13 Pro Max they did make it bigger again. Before the 13 Pro Max, the iPhone 11 Pro Max had the best battery life on an iPhone, but now the 13 Pro Max has the best battery again. I do live in Belgium, and they just started rolling out 5G. I hope by the end of 22 there will be 5G in the city where I live. I did not have a whole day with 5G, so I can't say if it's taking much power or not, but I I did have seen from others that it is not a that much of a battery drain. So if you're using 5G on the 13 Pro Max, you will still have a great battery life. And yeah, 120 Hz is on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it does not affect the battery life. I will talk later in this video about 120 Hz. The camera did also get a big upgrade this year, as earlier I said that the lenses are a little bit thicker and bigger, so the lenses can capture more light. So that means that the camera does have a better night mode. The wide lenses capture 2.2 times more light, and the ultra wide captures 90% more light. Now the iPhone 13 series has a cinematic mode, that means you can make a video with a blurred out background, so it's technically portrait mode for video. I don't use this so much, but it works really well. The only downside is that it only shoots in 1080p and 30 frames per second. I believe that in the iPhone 14 series they will let it work in 4K and 60 frames per second. Cinematic mode does also work on objects, so if you want to film a camera with a blurred out background you can. So as you can see it works pretty good. It also works on animals. You can also choose how much you want to blur out something. You can also choose what you want that will stay in focus and you can change the focus if you're recording or you can also change the focus on how much the background is blurred out in the photo app from Apple. This is really sick. The iPhone 13 series has now also a macro mode that means you can record or take a photo at a really close distance, up to 2 centimeters. This is using the ultra wide camera and it crops it. You can take really cool photos with it. So Apple did add Apple ProRes to the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Apple ProRes is a high quality loosely video compressed format. So if you're recording something in Apple Pro ProRes on the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, it will record without compressing the video. I do have a 128GB storage iPhone 13 Pro Max, so I can shoot an Apple ProRes in 1080p with 25 frames per second and 1080p with 30 frames per second. 
If you have an iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max with 256GB storage or more you can shoot in 1080p in 60 frames per second or 4K with 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second and 30 frames per second. Apple ProRes is an extremely big file so keep that in mind. Here is some footage in Apple ProRes. Also I did upscale it to 4K because my videos are in 4K. So as you can see it looks pretty good. Now the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max is also a 3 times optical zoom. So now you can zoom even more. Up to 50 15 times from the ultra wide camera and 9 times in the video mode. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch screen with 120 Hz. Apple names it promotion. It's an LTPO display that can go from 10 Hz to 120 Hz. That means if you're doing nothing on your iPhone, the frame rate will go all the way down to 10 Hz to preserve battery life. If you're scrolling, it will go all the way up to 120 Hz. Also, if you're gaming and if there's a lot of motion. And if you're watching a movie or a video, it will lock it to the frame rate that's being used for the movie or the video. This iPhone has a stronger screen LED of all smartphones. That's a ceramic shield on the screen. By the way, this was also on the 12 series, but I hope Apple will add ceramic shield on the back lens of the iPhone 14 series. That will be really sick. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has also a 25% brighter audio screen. So if you're using your iPhone outside much and a sunny weather, the screen will be brighter and easier to see. The screen used also support the high dynamic range, up to 1200 nits. So what is my experience of the iPhone 13 Pro Max after 5 months of use? I can only say wow what is this iPhone great, it's so fast and it's so reliable. I did not have a single problem with it in the past 5 months. Also the battery in the iPhone 13 Pro Max is too good I would say. I do mostly charge my iPhone not every day, mostly I charge it every 2 days. Also my battery condition is still at the 100% after 5 months of use. And I do charge my iPhone 13 Pro Max with the Apple MagSafe Duo so that will not hurt the battery at all. The screen I do really like. I can see the 120Hz. Some people will not see the 120Hz, but I do. If I pick up an older iPhone that does have 60Hz, it feels not smooth anymore and I can feel and see the difference. Also the screen can go really bright, so you can see it really good if the sun is shining on your screen. Face ID is for me the best unlocking system. The iPhone 12 and 13 series did get an upgraded 3 depth camera system. From iOS 15.4, that's now in beta, you can lock your iPhone safely with a mask on. That did already work if you did have an Apple Watch but that was not so secure. So Face ID is much better than before. But that does not mean I don't want Touch ID back. I think it needs to come back. On the iPhone Pro series it's need to be under the screen and on the non-pro series it's need in the power button like what Apple did with the iPad Air and the iPad Mini. To make it clear they don't need to replace Face ID with Touch ID but put Touch ID and Face ID on it together. The camera I don't use so much because I have a dedicated camera but sometimes I use it for photos and for social media. But I want to use more my iPhone camera for some things in my videos because the camera is really good. It's not perfect but nothing is perfect and it will get better over time. So the camera of the iPhone 13 Pro Max will be good enough for the most of people. But my experience is really good with the camera. I will be honest, if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max then do not upgrade, if you want the 120Hz then go for it. If you have an iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max I will say wait for the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max. If you have an iPhone XS Max or older I really do recommend to upgrade to the iPhone 13 series or just wait a little bit longer for the iPhone 14 lineup in September. I will not recommend to buy an iPhone between the iPhone 6 to 11 because all of these iPhones do not have 5G and I think it's better if you need a new iPhone just go for an iPhone 12 or the 13 series. These do have 5G, then you're future proof. I can say you need that iPhone or that iPhone because I don't know your situation. So the things I did say is what I do recommend. But if you don't care about 5G or a better camera or battery, just go for an older iPhone between the iPhone 10 and 11. And if you want a cheap iPhone, just wait a little bit longer because leakers are saying Apple will release in March the iPhone SE, third generation with 5G. So this is what I did have to say about it. If you need help to choose, which iPhone you shall buy, just let me know in the reactions and I will help you out. So this was the video for this week and before we closing up this video I want to say I will try to upload more like it's really hard for me to upload much because I script all of my videos and sometimes it's really hard for me to speak English in the right way so this is not scripted by the way this last part but I just want to say this and I will try to make a new video by next week that will be about the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max before I mentioned in that video so stay tuned for that so please drop a like and subscribe and if you have any any question just let me know in the reactions and I'll respond to it and also follow me on Twitter and I will see you in the next video.